Genre. Realistic fiction. Essential questions. How do teammates support one another? Why is every member important to a team? The Final Game by William Roy Brownridge. When I was a boy growing up on the prairies, hockey was the most important thing in my life. I had a crippled leg and foot, so I couldn't wear skates. But that didn't matter. I could play goal in my moccasins, so my teammates called me Moccasin Danny. Our hockey team was called the Wolves. I joined the team late in the season, along with my friends Pitu and Anita. Pitu was small but fast. Anita, who could play as well as any boy, was the first girl to join the league. At first, Pitu, Anita, and I played well and were part of the team. But whenever we lost a game, some of the wolves began to grumble. Travis, who was our best forward, called us the wimps, and said we weren't good enough to play on the team. Our coach, Mr. Matteau, told Travis to stop complaining and look after his own game. So instead of complaining, Travis ignored us. He never passed the puck to Anita or Patu in practice, not even in games. But somehow we managed to win enough to make it to the finals against the best team in the league. The Bombers were tough and fast, and the final game would be played on their home ice. The Bombers had a wonderful rink with new dressing rooms and grandstand seating on one side, with a huge sign that read "Home of the Bombers." This would be the biggest game ever for the Wolves. The more I thought about it, the more tense and worried I became. One morning before the final game, the piercing hoot of the train whistle woke me with a start. I jumped out of bed and ran to the window. Over the rooftops, a plume of white smoke billowed in the distance. My heart leapt. I had forgotten. My brother was on that train. Bob was a star left winger for a professional team. He was coming home to rest an injured shoulder. I arrived at the station late and out of breath. Coach Matteau, all the members of the Wolves, and half the town were there. After the cheers and noisy greeting had died down, I heard the coach say, "Bob." The team has their final playoff game tomorrow. Would you come to our practice this afternoon? I could barely see my brother through the crowd. Sure, coach, he said. Then he spotted me. But first, I'm going to visit my family. The crowd moved aside, and he walked towards me, whisked me up in one arm, and hugged me tight. He looked like a hero in his team jacket. That afternoon, as Bob and the coach skated out to practice, a ripple of excitement ran through the team. Everyone was thrilled to have a real pro teach us. At first, Bob worked the team through some passing and shooting drills. All the wolves played their best, but in our practice game, Travis tried to be the star. Instead of passing to Patu. Travis attempted to stick handle through the whole team and was checked and lost the puck. What a puck hog! Patu muttered. At the end of the practice, Mr. Matteau called the team together. You've shown Bob and me that you have the skills to win tomorrow, but can you play as a team? Please think about that when you go home tonight. The next afternoon, a huge crowd cheered as the two teams took to the ice. 
the cheering became a roar when Bob walked to the wolves' bench. I crouched in goal, torn between eagerness and fear. A jumble of loud voices called out, Come on, wolves! Come on, Marcus and Danny! And go, bombers, go! From the opening face-off, our Captain Marcel took charge and scored on a give-and-go with a sizzling shot to the goalie's stick side. Then Anita scored in a wild scramble in front of the bomber's net. We were flying high and leading two to zero. But in the final moments of the period, one of our defensemen tried to carry the puck out of the wolf's zone instead of passing. He was checked, and the bombers scored on me. I looked at our bench. Bob and Coach Matteau just shook their heads. The second period was a battle. The bombers tried to pick on Anita, roughing and tripping her without drawing a penalty. Finally, they cross-checked her to the ice. She came to the bench fighting back tears. Travis yelled out, What's the matter, wimp? Can't you take it? Somehow, we held the bombers off. By the end of the second period, we were still leading two to one. In the dying moments of the third period, we thought we had won. But then the bomber captain beat our defense and moved in on me home free. Patu, in a desperate move, tripped him from behind, and the referee whistled a penalty shot. It would be just him and me, the bomber's top scorer against Marcus and Danny. I felt dizzy. My opponent sneered. He came at me from center ice with a burst of speed and a blur of stick handling. Then he whipped a high, hard shot to my glove side. I got a piece of it, but the puck dropped into the net behind me. A minute later, the buzzer sounded the end of the period. The game was tied. We were going into overtime. I left the ice, my stomach tied in knots. The dressing room was quiet. Heads down, we tried to gather our strength. Bob stood and broke the silence. You're playing well. Keep pressing. Coach Matteau and I just want to make one change. Travis, you join Marcel's line with Patou on the wing. Travis grinned at Marcel, but as usual, he ignored Patou. Before we go, Bob continued, I'd like to tell you how I injured my shoulder. We were leading by one goal, and the game was almost over. The other team came on a rush, and one of our defensemen fell down. I had to back-check against their fastest winger. Just as the other team took a pass and was about to score, I managed to lift his stick, and the goal was saved. We won the game, but I crashed into the boards at top speed. I had to do whatever I could to help my team. That's what you do when you play this game. You play for the team. Bob moved behind Travis, patted his back, and whispered something in his ear. Then he looked up and said, Now, let's go get him. The bombers came at us in waves. I fought off so many shots I started to wonder if there were two pucks instead of one. One vicious shot glanced off my stick and rolled toward the goal line. Out of nowhere, Anita threw herself flat on the ice and hooked the puck to the corner. What a save! We quickly counterattacked with Mars. We quickly counterattacked, with Marcel scooping up the puck and charging to center ice. He passed to Travis, who broke across the blue line in full flight. Travis stick-handled furiously, but two bombers pushed him into a corner. Travis was trapped. 
Wildly, he looked around for another teammate, but no one was in the clear. Just as the bombers moved in to take the puck, Travis looked over to the goal. Little Patu, unnoticed, was alone at the open side of the bomber's net. Quickly, Travis whipped a pass across the ice. Patu coolly tipped it in. The game was over. We won. The crowd cheered as Officer Adams presented the North Line Cup to our Captain Marcel. As the commotion began to die down, I called out, Hey, Travis, what did Bob whisper to you just before we went on the ice? The crowd fell silent as all eyes turned to Travis. Travis shrugged and smiled. He said, Watch for Patu. The bombers don't cover him. Everyone cheered and laughed. Coach Mateau hoisted Patu on his shoulders and carried him off the ice. We celebrated long into the night at Chong's Cafe. We didn't want the evening to end. Everyone told and retold their story of the game. As we finally tumbled out of the cafe, Bob put his arm around Patu and led him over to Travis. So I guess there are no wimps on this team, are there? He said. Travis looked at Patu and nodded. No wimps, just winners, he answered with a grin.